Brown, um, Associate Professor of Political Science at UMass Boston, and I direct the program. Also on the info session with us uh, here on Zoom is Lee Murphy, who administers a lot of the program for us and is a very important person who you will get to know very well uh, if you uh, if you come to join us in the Master of Arts program. Uh, and I just want to say that uh, both of us have COVID right now, so you may detect a little bit of hoarseness in my voice, and I hope I uh, stay relatively coherent. I'm definitely on the upswing, but still a little bit uh, low energy, but I will try and, and speak up and hope my voice holds for the for the next half hour or so. Um, I'm going to share a slide deck with you with some information about the program. Um, and we can also send you the slides afterwards if you want. So don't feel like you have to transcribe the slides as they go by. Uh, feel free to just listen in, uh, watch the slides. And then if you'd like us to send them to you afterwards, uh, please send us an email and, and we can do that. So what is the Master of Arts in International Relations at UMass Boston? Um, this is a multidisciplinary program. Um, it is a two-year Master of Arts degree covering all aspects of the international relations field. Uh, for current UMass Boston undergraduates, we also offer an accelerated master's program, sometimes called a four plus one program, allowing you to earn your Master of Arts in roughly one additional year after completing your Bachelor of Arts that you're already enrolled in at UMB. So, uh, we may have both types of people on the call, people who are considering the MAIR from a traditional perspective. Uh, you're a first time applicant to UMass Boston and you'll do it in two years. Uh, or maybe some of you on the call are already UMass Boston undergraduates thinking about pursuing it in this uh, accelerated master's program format. Either way, uh, as a student in the program, you'll develop your understanding of international organizations, negotiation and conflict resolution, international development and the global south, and international environmental politics, among other subjects. It's a very flexible program, and it allows you to draw on the resources of many different departments at UMass Boston, tailoring your course of study to your personal, academic, and professional interests. The courses that you'll take will consider these issues from both theoretical and applied perspectives, which you might think of uh, otherwise as academic and policy perspectives for understanding international relations. There are many different graduate programs at UMass Boston uh, in international relations, global governance and human security, conflict resolution, um, <clears throat> many of the subjects listed here. Um, and as I mentioned, you're able to draw on these programs and take classes from the MA and PhD offerings in these other programs and departments because international relations is a, a large umbrella term and an umbrella subfield. Um, and so depending on what your focus is, maybe you're interested in international health, you might wanna pull in elective classes from some of these other programs that we have at UMB uh, to personalize your course of study. There are various Master of Arts and in International Relations programs at other universities, including universities in the Boston area. So you might be interested in what makes this program different from those um, unique and potentially interesting to you as an individual. Um, I think of this as a unique program because it's offered jointly by the Department of Political Science and the Department of Conflict Resolution human security and global governance. Um, these are two different departments at UMass Boston. We're both part of the College of Liberal Arts, but the uh, conflict resolution department is also part of the McCormick School. Um, and so you'll be able to draw on diverse faculty expertise on many of the subjects I mentioned before um, through those both theoretical and applied perspectives. As a result, the program that we offer positions our students for a variety of career paths, including academia. If you want to go on and pursue a PhD, this could be a sort of a, uh, a trial run at that and a stepping stone toward applying for a PhD. Um, and some of the career paths are more applied, like government, non-governmental organizations, think tanks, law, and consulting. We also draw in a really diverse and international student population. And Boston, you could think of it as the world's biggest university town. So there are a lot of resources uh, just by virtue of being in such an exciting place. As for the structure of the program itself, it consists of six core classes um, covering theories and concepts of international relations, um, 
specific subjects like political economy and research methods. Also contemporary issues uh, will be part of this. So different faculty members will teach a contemporary issues class in different ways, depending on their subject expertise. Also topics like international development and global governance, which might be of interest if you're planning one of those government or non-governmental organization careers. You'll also be able to choose four elective classes from related departments. So that conflict resolution, human security, and global it's governance it's department it's is one source of elective it's, classes. It's, it's, um, it's also like classes in the economics department or the history department. Perhaps advanced undergraduate offerings in political yeah, science can be uh, altered to, to serve as graduate mm, electives. Yeah, just... uh, can everybody please mute yourselves? Thank you. Um, so choosing those four electives is really how you'll customize your course of study during your two-year master's degree. And at the end, you finish with either a capstone class or doing a master's thesis. Most people choose the capstone class. Uh, you complete it with the rest of your graduate cohort that you came in with. Um, and you spend the semester uh, with the professor and with your fellow students working out a substantial piece of original research, uh, something on the neighborhood of maybe 35 pages of original work, and do a presentation at the end um, as a way of capping off your program um, <clears throat> and all of the research skills and subject knowledge that you've learned and presenting that to everybody. Uh, the thesis is an option. Um, the thesis is, is a full year process with a thesis committee, so it's much more involved. Um, it's a it's a larger piece of research, tends to be somewhere on the order of 90 pages. Um, usually I recommend that for students who are considering doing a PhD afterwards because it gets you off in the direction of that research project that you'll continue through your doctoral studies. Or if you're just very, very interested in a specific subject and there's a faculty member that has that same subject interest uh, you could work with for a full year. Uh, most people do the capstone. Um, it's still a substantial uh, research experience to cap off your program, but some people choose that thesis option as their way of finishing off the Master of Arts degree. As I mentioned, there are various careers that this degree could position you for, for and our students have gone on to do some interesting and, and exciting things. Some choose academic careers afterwards, um, others do those sort of applied or policy careers in international organizations, non-governmental organizations. Sometimes they, they help to found new organizations. Uh, a student of ours was instrumental in founding an organization called the Kigali Reading Center. People go on to careers in government agencies, um, the private sector, or private companies that do consulting work on behalf of governments. So I've had students I've advised in this program who have gone on to work for contractors, and then they do various types of work for the U.S. government. Uh, some people could work for other, other governments internationally as well. What is the student experience like at UMass Boston? Um, well, there are many different international rankings, and, and uh, the QS World University ranking has us among the top 100 universities in the world. We have a highly diverse and international student body, and so each cohort in the Master of Arts and in International Relations is a microcosm of the world. So you're learning from your professors, but you're also learning from your fellow students, both inside the classroom and the discussions you'll have there and outside in your various social interactions, because your cohort um, becomes a very important part of your experience. You study together, you have discussions together, you support each other, and having a diverse and international student body, especially for an international relations program, is a great asset. Um, as I mentioned, Boston is the world's largest university town. Um, we have uh, more research universities per square mile than anywhere else in the world. Um, and that means that if there are classes happening at other universities that you're interested in taking as your electives, sometimes we can work out relationships with those other universities. For instance, if you want to take a class at Boston University with a particular professor or at Northeastern University with a particular professor, there are ways of doing that and counting those credits back towards your electives for the degree here at UMass Boston. Also, people give lectures all the time. There are exciting events at the Harvard Kennedy School or the Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy. And so although you're a student at UMass Boston, um, you can participate in this vibrant intellectual climate um, that's really distributed over the whole city because of all the universities and research institutes and professors we have doing really exciting research and applied work in the greater Boston area. 
Um, people are often interested in what kind of support we can offer for students, financially speaking, um, and we do have some. We offer a number of fellowships and scholarships every year, generally based on the academic potential that an applicant shows in their statement of purpose, in their transcripts, uh, and in their letters of recommendation. So uh, two forms of financial support are fellowships. So either you're a research assistant or a teaching assistant working with faculty members at UMass Boston. Um, and then there are scholarships that support you through the first year of study. Um, there's one particular scholarship um, based on the way it's structured. Um, it's for people who come from either military veteran backgrounds in the U.S. or who are first generation college students in the U.S. Uh, or who are UMass Boston undergraduates going on to graduate study. And that's a, that's a one-year fellowship. But there are also two-year fellowship options that have that research assistant or teaching assistant component. So for the two years of your study, um, you do about nine hours a week of work for a professor. Um, and I think you receive something on the order of $9,000 of, of support. Um, and that, that follows you through your graduate career as a student at UMB. We only have two of those to offer, so I, I want to make really clear that although there are financial support sources for students, it's a very competitive process, uh, and they're they're awarded based on the the academic potential that we see in your application. So um, certainly, it makes sense to apply by our March fifteenth application deadline to be considered for financial aid, um, but it is. A somewhat competitive situation. We get something on the order of 15 students coming into the program every year, and we only have two of those research assistantships, um, and they tend to go to people who have like uh, upper class diplomas, high grade point averages, depending on what country you're coming for. Uh, being a, a student with demonstrable potential might mean different things, um, but we, we scrutinize your academic record very hard, and that's the basis on which the financial aid is awarded. We offer additional grants to cover conference particip participation. If you want to travel to a conference and uh, and and present some some work that you've been doing uh, in your graduate classes, students may also find additional opportunities to work for faculty who have research grants and who need to hire research assistants. Uh, in the past, when I've had research monies, I've hired master's students to do RA research assistant work for me. Um, but those are opportunities that you would most likely find out about after you've already come here to UMass Boston. How does the application process work? Um, we have two deadlines. One is the deadline for full consideration with financial aid. And I always recommend that people apply by this deadline so you, you can at least be considered for those scholarships and fellowship opportunities. And that's March 15th. All of the elements of your application package need to reach us by March 15th, because that's when we start looking at applicants uh, and making those early determinations about scholarships and fellowships. Um, you have to submit the application itself. Uh, there is an application fee. The application consists of your official transcripts from all universities where you studied previously. Um, if you're an international graduate applicant um, and you're not from a list of specific countries where, where uh, college education is done specifically in English, we would need you to take an English proficiency test. Um, there are different tests we can accept, um, the IELTS, uh, the Duolingo test. People find the test that, that makes sense for them and they submit those scores to us. We need to see a copy of your resume or curriculum vitae. Two letters of recommendation, ideally from professors you've studied with before, because it is an academic program. We're looking for people who know you well, who have read your work and can speak to your academic potential to succeed here. Um, we ask for a writing sample of about 10 pages that must be your original work solo authored. It can't be something that you've jointly offered with other people. We're looking for what your writing looks like to make sure it's it's uh, of a quality that will allow you to succeed in a two-year master's degree here. Um, and then, and I think this is most importantly, your letters of interest and intent. Um, I recommend that people structure it this way as a sort of general personal statement of 300 words or so, followed by some elaboration on your interests and goals. Why are you interested in pursuing a master of arts in international relations? Why are you interested in, in pursuing that degree here? Again, um, the application process can sound uh, daunting or intimidating, but really what we're looking for um, 
is signs that you're going to succeed academically here, right? We want students who are going to see uh, see the program through to a successful completion, right? It's two years. It's it's a it's a challenging program. We want to admit people who who we know are going to to be able to do well in their classes, and at the end of two years, come out with a master's degree, right? We are interested in your success, um, so we're just trying to make sure that you have the elements to succeed here. Um, and and if if you know, it, it, there are always challenges, but we want to make sure that you'll be able to surmount those. Um, that's what I have in the way of specific information for you. Um, I want to invite you to, to connect with me, to connect with, uh, with Lee Murphy. If you have other questions, if you want a copy of these slides, uh, if you have specific questions, uh, you can ask them now, or you can ask them later.